Ja, som du sagt før. Vi er tyst i nød. We got Maggie. And Neil, you alright? Yes, sir.
brethren, sisters, friends, all. Man on behalf of the Bushel Master, officers and members, the Ulster Defenders of the Realm, LOL 710, welcome you all to this Orange Remembrance Service. At this location, for 36 years to the very day, on the 24th of February 1988, two brethren, Frederick Sturt and James Collins, were murdered by IRA terrorists by serving with the Ulster Defence Regiment. The numbers present are testimony that these two lads and the others who sacrificed their all will never be forgotten. Let us open our service with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and most merciful Father, you laid the foundations of the heavens and earth. Before your face, generations rise and pass away. Be with us this day as we need to remember these two young men who were murdered by serving as members of the Ulster Defence Regiment CGC. As we gather to honour their memory, we ask your blessing on their families. Be to them what they need as they recall their loved ones. Surround them with their grace and strength as they continue to experience the pain of separation. O Lord, continue to sustain and comfort them. May they know your peace through the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your presence, we give thanks for the short lives of Frederick Sturrett and James Cummins, for their service to their country, and for the love they had for their families and they for them. May their families, friends and colleagues recall with joy the experiences they shared and the cherished memories held. May these recollections remind them of the many good times they shared, rather than dwelling on the pain caused by evil men and women. As we remember those who give their all, we ask for continued healing for those who suffered mentally and physically because of their service, and for your protection from those who continue to serve in the ranks of the Royal Irish Regiment and other formations and agencies who are committed to defeating terrorism wherever it is found. O Lord of life, guide all our thoughts and actions as we come to your throne of grace to seek your comfort at this service of remembrance. Help us to realize that one day the trials and tribulations of this world will be no more. May we be prepared for that day and in faith and hope look forward to the kingdom where there will be no more evil or terror, no more murder or heartache, no more hatred and intolerance, only love and joy through all eternity. Until that day, may we glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Psalms. Psalm 127. Be read for us by the Lord Secretary, Worship Brother Jim McCaw. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watching in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior and children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. May the Lord give us rich his blessing to this reading. We're going to join in the singing of Psalm 23, the well-known psalm that ministers to the pain of bereavement and loss. A psalm that carries the promise that no matter what difficulty we face, even death itself, the Lord will be with us, offering us care, his comfort, strength and grace. This hymn will be played for us by Lagan on the Accordion Band. You'll find the words in the order of service. Let us sing these words of comfort and hope. The Lord's my shepherd.
as I said, we meet 36 years to the day when two young part-time privates in the Ulster Defence Regiment, James Cummings and Frederick Sturt, were brutally murdered by cards near this spot. I suspect the majority here remember the context of the times, but their younger faces in the crowd who would have no memory of the troubles, as they were called, and let me say, that's a good thing. The violence and terror faced by those who served the crown, the fear and anxiety of their families and the wider public is thankfully no longer the daily experience of life. Not one man or woman served to perpetuate violence. They served to protect all communities. They served to defeat terrorism. They served to bring peace. The peace we have today is founded on the service and sacrifice of lads such as James and Fred. It's difficult for a younger generation to understand, to comprehend life during the Troubles. The city centre had a ring of steel around it. Civilian searchers and soldiers searched everyone coming into the city. Many shops had their own security who frisked you and searched your bags as you entered. Each night staff checked for incendiary bombs. The commercial heart of our towns and cities were blocked off to prevent car bombs. And no security force members who manned the barriers were prime targets. In 1988, Castle Court was being built. The security gates were across the road. And Private Starr and Cummings were part of a UDR patrol that were locking the gates that evening. Under cover of darkness, terrorists had laid a command wire and connected it to a 150 pound bomb behind the building site hoarding. It was detonated as James and Fred exited their Landover with horrendous results. Two more grieving families of victims of Republican murders. Today we remember and honour the memory of those two soldiers. There was much talk during COVID about superheroes, and not all superheroes were a cloak. Superheroes of extraordinary powers and exist in the world of make-believe, like Spider-Man or Batman or Superwoman. They can do things which ordinary people cannot do. Heroes, on the other hand, are ordinary people who do extraordinary things. These two UDR soldiers who were murdered that night were ordinary young men who, like many other men and women, volunteered in the fight against terrorism. They were heroes. We need to remember, and this generation needs to understand, that men and women, young and old, volunteered to defend community and country. It was that selfless service of thousands which laid the foundation for the peace we enjoy today. They served so you don't have to volunteer today. They give up their free time so you don't. That's why we stand with their surviving relatives to show the loss of their loved ones will not be forgotten. Nor will we allow their memory to be sullied. For anyone to say there was no alternative to terrorism in Northern Ireland, no alternative blowing up towns and murdering people, is not only a blatant liar, they are complicit in the misery caused. Such comments are grossly offensive to all decent people but especially to those who lost loved ones and suffered, such as the families we stand with today. Justifying terrorism, seeking to excuse their grubby, cowardly so-called campaign for United Ireland was never justified. It is important that this generation and future generations know the truth, and this is part of our remembrance. It was those who served who were the heroes, who stood in the gap between right and wrong, who were the watchmen and women who stood guard against evil and terror. <coughs> However, as these two brother orange men would have understood, for those of faith, we know no matter how noble or heroic the members of the security forces were, their efforts alone would not defend Northern Ireland. We trust in a higher authority, Fred and James, along with thousands of others, did their bit. But we know our ultimate security, the peace and prosperity of Northern Ireland, rests in the hands of Almighty God. 
as a reading from Psalm 127 clearly states, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord guards a city, the watchmen keep awake in vain. There is no true peace, not for us as individuals, nor for us as a nation, apart from God. Oh well, yes, it's right and proper to remember those who answered the call to fight terrorism. But ultimately it is God who protects the United Kingdom. It is God who will continue to bless the peace we have. And if you want to play your part in our nation's future, we must return to our churches. We must pray. We must return to the God of our forefathers who delivered in victory at Dariokram and Eskil and the Boyne. The same God who delivered our nation in two world wars and the God in whose sovereignty the terrorism of the Troubles was defeated. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Privates Cummings and Sturt did not watch over this city in vain. They were men of faith. They trusted God to watch over us during the darkest days. They knew God had already won the victory of evil through his son Jesus Christ at Calvary. God still watches over us as we seek to build a better future for all people in Northern Ireland. It is not always easy to accept God watches over us when every day seems to bring more bad news, when criminals and terrorists are rewarded and the guilty go free. It is not easy when we experience the loss of good men to terror, but that is when we need God most to support us, strengthen us, and provide hope through the salvation and grace he offers each one of us. Jesus was talking to his friends and followers about where we find the blessings of God in difficult times. The Bible tells us this. God blesses you when you're exhausted and confused, because then you can lean on him and find his kingdom. God blesses you when you're grieving, for he comforts you. I know that has been the experience of Fred and James' families. It is God's strength and grace that has seen them through. God's power takes effect in us when we turn to him for salvation, forgiveness and eternal life. Today we honour two ordinary men, Private James Cummings and Private Fred Sturt, unassuming heroes who serve to defend their homes, their families, their communities and their country and who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Apostle Paul asked, can anything separate us from God's love? Can trouble or hardship or hunger or persecution or danger or violence? No, even in the face of all these things, we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Lest we forget. Amen. Let us fall silent as our act of remembrance is led by Worship Brother Davy Saunders, Worship Master of LOL 710. They shall grow not old, as we are left grow. Age shall not worry them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them about it <coughs> and say, for your tomorrow, we give our today. After our closing prayer and benediction, we'll sing the first verse of the National Anthem. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us at this service of remembrance for Frederick Sturt and James Cummings. Let us honour their memory through the lives we lead. And may each of us give thanks to God for Jesus Christ and the sacrifice on the cross. In our remembrance, Lord, we ask your blessing and protection 
and all those who still serve in the forces of the Crown, especially those in active service in the Middle East. Lord, as we conclude our active remembrance, continue with those and pray it, and take us all safely to our homes. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and all whom we love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Now shall anthem.